Once upon a time, in a faraway land, a long, long time ago, there was a mighty king named Nebuchadnezzar. And he made a statue of gold that was nine feet wide and 90 feet tall. He set it up in the plain of Dura in the province of Babylon. And then he sent word to gather all of the satraps, the administrators, the governors, the counselors, the treasurers, the judges, the magistrates, and all of the officials of all of the provinces to come to the dedication of the statue which he, the king, had made. So all of the officials of all of the provinces gathered before the image, and a herald cried aloud, To you it is commanded, O peoples, nations, and languages, that at the time you hear the sound of the horn, flute, lyre, harp, and psaltery, in symphony with all kinds of music, you shall fall down and worship the gold statue that King Nebuchadnezzar has set up. And whosoever does not fall down and worship shall be cast immediately into a burning, fiery furnace. So at the time when the music was heard, all the people, nations, and languages fell down and worshipped the gold image which the king had made. Now, at that time, there were certain Chaldeans who came forward and made an accusation. O oh, king, may you live forever. You, O oh, king, have made a decree that everyone who hears the sound of the music shall fall down and worship the gold image. And whosoever does not fall down and worship shall be cast in the midst of a burning, fiery furnace. That's true, said the king. Well, said the Chaldeans, there are certain Jews who you have set over the affairs in the province of Babylon, namely Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, these men, O king, have not paid due regard to you. They do not serve your gods, and they do not worship the image which you have set up. Nebuchadnezzar, in rage and fury, said, Bring them to me right now. And he said to them, Is it true, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you do not serve my gods or worship the gold image which I have set up? Right now, when you hear the sound of the horn, flute, lyre, harp, and psaltery, you shall fall down and worship the image which I have made. But if you do not worship, you shall be cast immediately into a burning, fiery furnace. And who is the God that will deliver you from my hands? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego replied and said, O oh, great king, we have no need to do this. For if this is the case, the God whom we serve will deliver us from the burning fiery furnace, and he will deliver us from your hand, O king. But even if that does not happen, let it be known to you, great king, that we will not serve your gods, and we will not worship the gold image which you have set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar was full of fury and his face contorted, and he commanded that they heat the furnace seven times hotter than usual. And he commanded certain mighty men of valor from his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and cast them into the burning, fiery furnace. And because the king's command was so urgent, the furnace was so exceedingly hot, the flame of that fire killed the men who had cast Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego into the furnace. But wait, King Nebuchadnezzar was astonished 
And he rose in, he ha in haste and spoke to his counselors. And he said, did we not cast three men into the midst of the burning fiery furnace? And they answered and said, that is true, O king. He said, look, I see four men loose walking in the midst of the fire and they are not hurt. And the form of the fourth is like one of the sons of God. So the king went to the mouth of the burning fiery furnace and he said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, servants of the Most High God, come out, come here. And they came forth from the midst of the fire. And the satraps, administrators, governors, and all the king's counselors gathered together. And they saw these men on whom the fire had had no power. The hair of their head was not singed. Their garments were not affected. And the smell of the smoke was not on them. Nebuchadnezzar the king spoke and said, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who sent his angel to deliver and save his servants who trusted in him. And therefore I make a decree that any people, nation, or language who speaks anything amiss against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego will be torn to pieces and their house reduced to ashes because there is no other God who can deliver like this. And so the king promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the province of Babylon. Wow, <laughs> this is a, a whopper of a story. Now, our three heroes were observant and they knew the law of Moses. Thou shalt have no other God before me, and thou shalt not worship any image or idol. They stayed faithful to their spiritual beliefs, to what they knew to be the truth. Now, gold in so many cultures has been considered an alchemical symbol for mental and spiritual perfection. And poor King Nebuchadnezzar is certainly not alone in confusing material gold with holiness and divinity. For example, we like to think of ourselves as so much more modern than the primitives in this story. Yet there are some who have stated that in our culture, we worship money. Some have said we worship status and stardom some think we worship our cars you know if you came from another culture and looked at a lot of our media you might think that we worship deodorants digestive treatments and ed pills <laughs> if an archaeologist from another planet came down and watched or read a lot of our news they might conclude that the biggest idol that we worship is fear. Isn't it amazing how the little slightest hint of negative news, the media throw 100 gallons of gasoline on it and light it. And it doesn't matter which side of the so-called political spectrum you're on, they all do it relentlessly, ruthlessly. Experts say, things might get worse. Experts say things probably will get really bad. And most of the time, they never even tell you who the experts are who are saying that. And it's probably true. At this time in our history, probably the biggest idol that we bow down to is fear, ecological fear, political fear, pandemic fear, plus all the little and big day-to-day -day things that we all got to worry about. Now, when we give our attention to the fear, we've removed our attention from the truth. And the medical, metaphysical meaning of all this is pretty obvious. When we bow down to the false god of fear, it just takes over our being. And it doesn't matter whether it's pandemic or politics or personal matters, 
the more that we dwell on it, the less we're able to see the beauty, the goodness, the godness that's all around us all the time. There's a man named Serge Kahili King who wrote a book called The Urban Shaman. And he teaches seven principles of Hawaiian medicine called Huna. The third principle of Huna is Makia. Makia is very simple, short, and clear. It is energy flows where attention goes. Energy flows where attention goes. And it's in really another way of saying unity's third basic principle, the law of mind action, which Charles Fillmore, our co-founder, said, thoughts held in mind produce after their kind. Thoughts held in mind produce after their own kind over and over and over again. And it doesn't matter whether we say Energy flows where attention goes or thoughts held in mind produce after their own kind. Whatever we focus on, whatever we give our energy to, the thoughts that we recycle in our brain is ultimately what we wish it. Now, in the New Testament Greek, the word that is translated as worship is proskunio. Proskunio literally means to fall down before or bow down before. Now, I don't know about you, but I sure have fallen down in my own head worrying about things a lot of times. I'm kind of ashamed to admit this, but a couple of weeks ago, I woke up in the middle of the night and I couldn't go back to sleep because I was so upset about a certain politician. I got wound up. And finally, I came to myself and I started saying a short, short little prayer mantra over and over and over and over again, counting sheep, <laughs> counting God, counting mantras. And I was finally able to get to sleep. It's embarrassing to stand up in front of you and saying, I was wasting all of my time when I could have been sleeping, giving my energy all of my thoughts over to fear and outrage. This is so not productive. What did our great teacher say in Matthew 6, 27? Which of you can add one minute or an hour to your lifetime by worrying? Stress makes us sick in our mind, in our body, in our soul, in our hearts. Right now, COVID is sure the big boogeyman, the Delta variant. Now, personally, I try and be mindful and prudent, yet it's concerning. I'm, I'm going to have surgery next month and another one later on in the year. Now, it's nothing life threatening. I'm fine. You know, you can bless me and bless the surgeons, really. <laughs> but, my resistance is low, and as much as I want to be here today and hug all of you people, <laughs> I'm not going to do it. I'm going to leave right after the service, because if I even have the hint of a positive test, the queen will postpone the surgery again. I love saying that. The queen will postpone. <laughs> if you're not from Napa... Steve, the queen is the queen of the Valley Hospital. <laughs> you know, another thing that's kept me awake at night is the burning, fiery furnace of flames that was around our home in 2017. We were on a mini retreat way up the North Coast. And 11 at night, Chris got a text from her niece saying, big fire heading towards your house. What? Huh? We were too far away to get back to Napa. I couldn't sleep. I was just felt so helpless. And then I came to myself a little bit and I started a process there in the dark. 
and I visualized fire and I blessed fire for all the gifts it's given humanity and me personally. Heat, warmth, cooking, alchemy of making metals and glass. I honored fire and I did not see it as bad. And I merged myself with fire and flames and I became one with fire. And from the center of the flames, I directed fire around our home, all the way around our home. Took it up to it and directed it around the home. And when we got back the next day, that's what had happened. <laughs> the fire burned our trailers, our sheds, melted the front of my little sports car, but the home was completely intact. The carport with Chris's new car was completely intact. The pump house was intact. The kitty was safe in the house. The neighbor girl had been feeding. Kitty was really glad to see us. <laughs> we spent that day, all that night, the next day, the next night, scooping up water out of the creek. There was no power for the pump and putting out spot fires. Well, it turned out that our tree guy, Jake Songer, had come up that night and had spent 13 hours fighting the fire, cutting fire lines all over, moving debris, scooping up water out of the creek, putting out spot fires. I was just so overwhelmed when I finally talked to him, I just was sobbing. And I said, why? us. We're not even friends. We just hired you to do our trees. And he said, oh, I think we're going to be friends for a long time now. <laughs> yeah. And I said again, why us? Why us? And he said, well, it's something I know how to do. I was a hill attack firefighter but I couldn't let it go. I said, why us out of all of your customers and all of your friends, why'd you come to our house? And he said, you and your wife are such good people. I would not be able to live with myself for the rest of my life if I didn't do what I know how to do. <laughs> and I said, Wow, I kind of thought it was my meditation. <laughs> and he said, what do you mean? And so I explained what I did. And he said, oh, absolutely. That was a part of it. That was very important. I felt something going on. I said, yeah, but you did it, man. And he said, we both did what we know how to do. And it was important. Now, hearing that little story, we don't ever want to th think that we can pray our way out of anything. <laughs> There's obviously several moving parts. Uh, big one is Jake. Uh, the karma of Chris's family that's in her family homestead up there on the mountain. You know, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego just didn't wake up that morning and think, They didn't just wake up and think, oh, we're going to be good today. They had been practicing their spiritual truth for years. It's life. It's God calling us. Now, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego had been practicing for years, just like all of you folks that show up at Unity Spiritual Center every Sunday. That, that, that's important. Continuity is important. And remember that old joke of the Baptist preacher whose house was flooding when the river rose and the water got up to his porch and his neighbor rolled up in a tractor and said, jump on, pastor. I'll, t I'll take you to safety. And the pastor said, no, no, no. God's going to save me. And then the 
flood water rose higher and it was moving through his house and somebody rolls up in a boat and says, I'll take you to safety, Pastor. And he says, no, 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 God's going to save me. The water keeps rising higher and he's got to climb up on the roof. And a helicopter flies over and drops a ladder down and says, climb up, sir, we'll save you. And he goes, no, 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 God's going to save me. The river rises up and washes him off the roof and he's flailing in the water and he goes, God, I trusted in you. I prayed to you and now you've forsaken me. The sky opens up. The light shines through and a loud voice says, I sent you a tractor. I sent you a boat. I sent you a helicopter. What more do you want? We've got to be real. We've got to pay attention and refrain from being prideful like the teacher. We don't set up camp on railroad tracks. We don't open email attachments we're not 100% sure of. We don't hang around with negative people. We don't place ourselves in harm's way. We practice good karma. Most importantly, like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, we just do our best to stay true to the spirituality that we know. I'm, I'm, I'm concerned about fire this summer. Last August, I loaded up my car with plenty of clothes, all my precious things, important papers, kept my two best guitars by the doorway ready to go, and I'll probably do that this summer too. I'm not going to be arrogant and stupid. We cannot control other people. We cannot control viruses. We cannot control the elements. We do, however, have dominion over our thoughts. We do have a choice in our responses. And as we rise up and access our spiritual self, our true self, we find just a smoother path easily to our greater good. And as we do this, we find it easier to forgive ourselves for our past. Does anyone besides me need to forgive themselves for past actions? Yeah, <laughs> that's part of the ride. And as we take responsibility for our present and our future, we find it easy to make the right and proper planning and to take the appropriate actions. We have this choice every day. Can we look forward, hold our vision up when we're in a time of darkness? Can we see this darkness as a cocoon time where we will morph into a butterfly? If we're standing in front of a burning, fiery furnace, can we hold a future vision that we can be a phoenix and rise up out of the ashes and start flying? That's what we want to do. And let's do that right now. Let's do some soaring. Let's practice our unity principles. Maybe use a little bit of Huna medicine and consume with the one true God. Let's connect with that truth which has always been inside us and that truth which is outside of us. It's in every part of this beautiful world we live in. We are surrounded by beauty right here, right now. And as we move into this inner truth, breathe in this fresh air, enjoy it. There's sounds around us, birds, life itself, even noises from the road. It's all part of the divine design. It's all God. Even me, even you, you're a part of the divine design. Even with all of our regrets and our flaws and our fears, we are a part of the heart of God. And God is a part of our hearts. It's all okay. It's all good. And in this time of 
inner freedom float back to a time when you were a child and something magical happened. And just grab the first memory that comes up. Maybe someone did something extraordinary to, to you or for you that you couldn't believe. Maybe you got the toy or the doll that you didn't believe was possible and it was there under the tree and you unwrapped it. Maybe you did something and you thought you were going to be punished and you got hugged instead and you were rescued. Or maybe it was just a golden day. And if you can't remember your childhood, that's okay. Just pick something wonderful and magical that happened. Just float into that moment, that memory. And as you immerse yourself in this memory, bring up that feeling that you had of joy or happiness or elation or relief or wonder. Picture yourself there. Picture that feeling Revel in it, hold it, capture it, and just hang out for a few moments now in the quiet with this feeling of wonder and magic and specialness and holiness. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Know that this feeling, this magical feeling is God inside of you. And at that time, you had the light of God flowing through you and around you. And remember that the light, which was then, is also right now. This light is always available to you, in you, through you, as you, always, in all ways you no longer need to be dazzled by the shimmer of the false golden gods of fear 
you can instead bask in the radiant beauty of the holiness of life itself. The holiness of your own heart. And the holiness and beauty of this beautiful earth that we call home. And for the privilege of this life that we have. And for the privilege of being here together today on this beautiful earth, in this beautiful earth, of this beautiful earth. We say, thank you, God. Say this with me. Thank, thank you, you, God. God. Again. Thank, thank you, God. God. One more time. Thank you, God. 